Hello and welcome to the weekly round of video with me, Dave Madden. Today's date is Tuesday the 29th of May 2018 and the time has just gone 11.20 British summer time. Ordinarily, the, week, the weekly update video is done on Monday, but yesterday was a bank holiday in the UK. Uh, so taking a look at what's been going on in European markets, uh, as you can see, uh, this major sell-off uh, in Europe and in terms of equity markets today, essentially this is all down to political uncertainty in both Italy and Spain. Uh, taking a look at Italy first of all, um, Carlo Cottarelli has, has been in, is, is going to be inserted as a caretaker prime minister in Italy. Uh, it's, it's the aim of the move is to actually just bring about a small bit of political stability in Italy. But we are lo essentially looking at uh, new general elections uh, within the next months uh, or as towards the back end or, or, or towards uh, the, the beginning of 2019. There could be general elections uh, in Italy as early as August or so we're talking about the, the beginning of next year. Essentially, the rise of the five-star movement and the Liga Party, uh, anti-establishment, anti-euro, uh, anti-EU, uh, anti-establishment parties, has really worried traders. Um, especially as that there, there is talk that Italy is looking, is kind of looking. Some of these politicians are looking to take Italy out of the euro. This has really rattled the Italian government bond market, which put major pressure on Italian banks and also Italian stocks as a whole. Over in Spain, there's also political uncertainty over there. Prime Minister Rajoy is on thin ice. Uh, he's facing a vote of no confidence on Friday, and obviously we could be looking at a snap general election in Spain in the near term as well. Combination of both has really just uh, kind of reignited the, the, the Eurozone debt crisis, and it's really highlighted the, the divisions between Southern Europe and Northern Europe. So even though the predominantly um, the, the predominant selling is in Italy and Spain, we're also seeing the likes of the CAC and the DAX and also the FTSE being dragged lower as well, just because sentiment in Europe as a whole is, is quite negative. So they're the kind of major stories in terms of macro issues uh, over the past few days. Taking a look now at the week ahead, and the week ahead can be found on our, on our uh, website uh, under the news and analysis section. Here it is, week ahead. And then click along here to find the this article here. The week ahead, US non-farm payrolls, manufacturing, PMI, and first group results. So I'll quickly scan through the major events of the week. So looking ahead to tomorrow, over in the US on Wednesday, we have Dick's Sporting Goods Group have first, first, um, first quarter numbers coming out. On Thursday, we have a full year figures from first group here in the UK, the travel operator. On Thursday morning, we have the Euro Eurozone CPI numbers out. This is going to be of particular importance. Uh, CPI, the inflation rate in the Eurozone, is near, nearly at a one-year low. It's been, it's been a decline, and this is obviously going in the opposite direction to where the European Central Bank wanted. So if the price of, if the if, if prices continue to fall, it would suggest demand is quite weak, and that is precisely the direct opposite of what the European Central Bank wants. And obviously, the euro itself is under major pressure given what's going on in Italy and Spain. On Friday, we have manufacturing PMIs from the from basically all the major Euro European countries. This will also be an indicator of how well the region is doing. Um, we have seen a, a bit of a, a slowdown in some of the economic economic indicators in the eurozone. This could be we could see further proof that the um, that the the region is is going through a bit of an economic soft patch. And obviously, the entire block as a whole is in focus given what's going on in relation to politics in both Spain and Italy. Uh, first quarter numbers from Abercrombie and Fitch on Friday, and obviously we also have the U.S. non-farm payrolls figures coming out on Friday as well, which will probably be one of the, uh, the major events of the week. So turning now to a, taking a quick look at a number of the markets. Um, basically, essentially, we're in a sea of red as far as uh, European equity markets are going. We're also looking to, for a lower start to both the, the to Eurozone markets as well, to, to U.S. markets as well. So... The FTSE 100 obviously had a terrific run for a couple of months, but as you can see, the back end of the last week and the last couple of sessions have been very much, uh, very much in the red. So after actually going out to hit a record high, only uh, only this day last week, we're actually giving giving back a considerable amount of ground. But seeing as we've had effectively had a rally for about two months, a, a bit of a pullback isn't going to be a surprise. And especially what's going on in the eurozone, it was always going to it was always going to actually drag uh, non eurozone countries into the red too. So taking a look here on the on the FTSE 100, uh, we could be looking at find, finding some, some support potentially in around the 7,600 area, this level here. And if we go south of here, we could find some support coming into play in around the 7,482. The market's been coming off quite sharply the last few, few sessions. 
what we've seen here clearly is a swing from positive momentum to negative momentum on the MACD histogram, the MACD indicator. So as the market's moving lower, we are seeing a steady increase in negative momentum. So we could see the downward move continue in the near term. It's only when the, the political uh, uncertainty in the, in the likes of Italy and Spain looks to clear up, could then we actually see a potential resumption of the wider upward trend. And if we do look to continue to, to, um, to continue the wider upward trend, we could be looking heading back up towards 7,800 or up towards 7,900. The DAX also is, uh, is very much in the red today, given the um, general uncertainty in the entire block as a whole. The DAX, like the FTSE, had, had enjoyed a, a very positive run for about eight weeks. As you can see here, very impressive uh, upward move, multi-week high, multi-month highs. We saw only this day last week on the Jeremy 30 on the DAX. But as we can see, it's been coming off quite aggressively ever since. We've actually traded south of the two-day moving average, this red line here, but it's still managed to hold above it for the time being. Similar to the FTSE, uh, we've seen a, a sell-off in the, in, the, in the last few sessions. And that is going to be confirmed by the steady increase in negative momentum here. So as the market's moving lower, the negative momentum, the momentum with the, with the, with the bears, the momentum with the sellers is, is increasing. So we could see the market to continue to push lower from here. And should we continue to push lower from here, we could be looking heading back down towards 12,600 or perhaps this blue line here, the 50 moving average, which comes into play at 12,547. Move to the upside, could run into resistance in around the 12,900 or 13,000 mark. And if you go north of 13,000, we could be looking at it back and forth the recent high in around this area here of 13,200. Take a look now at the market that has suffered the most. We take a look at the Italian market first of all, and then followed by the, uh, the Spanish market. As we can see here, it gives you a magnitude of a sell-off. Uh, that we've seen here in the Italian market. So the Italian market has been has been in decline pretty much since the beginning of May. Um, and as you can see here, as the market's been pushing lower, there's been a steady increase in negative momentum. We, we, we've seen no signs that the that this sell-off is actually is is, uh, is coming to an end. The market's pushing here. The the move on today's session here actually has managed to take out the lows of March. So we've now created fresh 2018 lows, but also levels not seen. Since uh, since July and August uh, in 2017, so we are talking about you know 10 months lows, nine 10 month lows on the uh, on the Italian 40, uh, the, the, the the FTSE move. So if we continue to push on south from here, we could be heading back down towards 21,000. And if we go south of 21,000, the next big level to watch out for will be this this price area here of 21,500, 21,000, sorry 20,532. Quite a bit of both uh, resistance and support in around the 20,500 20, mark uh, if, uh, March last year and also uh, April and May last year too. We really want to be moving back, say, north of, say, 22,000, uh, or, or, or at the very least taking off the 20 moving average, which comes into play at 22,700, this red line here, before we can become confident that this recent negative move has come to an end. Just take a look now at what's going on in the Spanish market. So the Spanish market, as you can see, uh, has also uh, had a bit of, bit of a bit of a sell-off in the last few sessions. The positive, it's still just about in positive momentum, but as you can see, positive momentum is actually in decline. So as the market is moving lower, we are seeing positive momentum fade away. So we could look at retesting the recent lows. The uh, the um, we could be looking at be at, at, at testing the uh, the recent. Um, the recent lows that we saw in March, of uh, which come into play in at 9,327. And if we go south of there, we're looking at heading back down towards 9,235. So as, as you can see here, a bit of a fair example, a good example of a downward trend on the uh, on the, the Spain 35. Essentially, while we hold south of the journey moving average, which comes into play just north of 10,100. The outlook for the market is likely to be to be negative, and if you take out this level here, the most recent the, uh, the March lows of uh, 9,327, we could be looking heading back down towards the February low of 9,235. Take a look now at what's going on in the oil markets. First, first to look at is uh, Brent crude oil. So obviously we saw fresh 42 month highs 
hit on the oil market uh, last week. There's a lot of talk that both Saudi Arabia and Russia are actually going to look to kind of ease up on the production freeze that they've, that, they've, that they've had in place for some time now. So there's a lot of speculation there's going to be increased production in the near term. Uh, the OPEC, OPEC have, a, have a meeting next month and there's talk, and there's talk we're, we're going to see an increase in production. So that was the perfect excuse for a bit of profit taking because the oil market has been essentially in a strong upward trend for, for about 11 months. The market's come off here off, off its, off its multi, multi, multi-year highs. It's been a steady increase in negative in negative. Uh, a negative momentum. So this 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 downtrend that has been in the last couple of sessions, we could see a drift a bit further. We could see a drift down to the recent lows of 73.10. But given that's been in such a, such a strong upward trend, if we if that upward trend does look to resume, we could look at heading back up towards the 80 dollar mark for Brent crude. Take a look now. What's going on in WTI? It's a fairly similar looking chart for WTI. In that. It recently hit 42 month highs, but we have seen a fairly sizable sell off uh, given that given there, there is so much uh, speculation about we're going to see increased production from OPEC next month and from the likes of Osh- from the likes of Saudi Arabia and Russia. So as you can see here, actually on, on WTI, that she managed to drop back below the 50-day moving average. This this blue line here, and while it remains south of the 50-day moving average at 67.64, the likelihood we could see a, a bit of further downside pressure in the near term. And if we do manage to drift a bit lower, we could be linked heading back down towards this yellow line here, the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at 65.20. And if we go south of there, it could take us back down towards the April low of 61.78. But given that's been an upward trend for about a year or so, if we do see the upper, if the wider upward trend look to uh, look to fall back into place, we could be looking at it back up towards $70 a barrel or the recent high of 72.79. Take a look now. What's going on in the euro versus the US dollar? So the euro has been losing ground against the, the US dollar for about five or six weeks now. It's been a solid downward trend since mid to late April. It's been driving lower here. We're not seeing any signs of the of this sell-off letting up so far. We've even taken out the November low, uh, which which, uh, which came into play um, at 116, sorry 115.54. So we are talking, you know, multi-month lows. Levels not seen really since July last year uh, on the euro versus the US dollar. The next area to keep an eye forward to the downside will be 115, and south of that coming into play potentially at one this area this area here at 114.79, and if we go south of 114.79, we could be looking at heading back down towards 114. The figure. We'd, in order for us to, and if any, and if we do see any pullbacks in the euro versus the US dollar, we could see support coming into play in around the, the 116 area or the 117 area. But we'd really need to be taking out the. Um, the late May high of 118.29 before we get any kind of confidence that the euro is actually looking to uh, to kind of have a have a full and sizable correction. I take a look now at the British pound versus the US dollar. Similar situation has been losing losing ground steadily for the last say five or six weeks versus the um, versus the pound's been losing ground for the last five or six weeks versus the US dollar. It's been in a steady downward trend here. As you can see, we've been traded low, nearly as far low as 132. If you continue on in this downward trend, the next area to keep an eye out for will be 131, and south of that, uh, in in around 130.27. We can see a lot of a few few occasions in October, November last year, in around in around the kind of 130.27, 130.30 uh, area, we did see support come into play on a number of occasions. So keep an eye out for that uh, levels to the downside. Should we continue to push out, should we see any, any kind of bounce back, we may find some support in around the 133 area or perhaps up, up as high as 134.50. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.